Oh, there we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Ram, and uh, welcome to Coding with Nihilus. Uh, I was just figuring out which streams were actually active. Uh, so we are live on YouTube, um, and welcome. So today, we're going to talk about uh, some exciting stuff. We're going to talk about how to integrate the Nihilus scheduler. And we're going to jump into that, and we're going to do a few things there. So we're going to talk about first uh, how to set up the dashboard, how to set up the uh, Nihilus scheduler, uh, in the, uh, what things you need to do to add to the Nihilus dashboard to use the scheduler. Uh, we're going to look at code for adding uh, the Nihilus scheduler in React. Um, and then as well, we're going to go through a demo. So we're going to look at the code, and we're going to go through a demo of an application where you have the scheduler there, where uh, an individual can go in and create different schedulers for other people to book time with them or whatever service they're offering. So we're going to go through how to integrate the knowledge scheduler. But before we do that, I want to talk about something else that is exciting. Uh, it's our dev challenge. So we have a dev challenge going on right now. And I just want to share the actual, uh, there we go. So here is the web page. So if you go to uh, dev.to uh, forward slash challenges uh, forward slash Nihilus, you'll see our dev challenge that has started as of uh, two days ago. So starting on Wednesday, August 7th, and it runs until August 18th. So there's about over a week to go. So DevTO hosts all these challenges where you can submit applications and, and software that you're working on. In our case, the theme is combining Nihilus, our communication uh, APIs for email, calendar, and contacts and as well AI. So whatever AI you can embed inside of our communication APIs, we would love to see you submit, or we would love to see your submissions for the actual DevTO challenge. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, again, that is DevTO forward slash challenges forward slash Nihilus. And now we're gonna jump into the actual scheduler integration. So let me just kind of share the launch or the launch blog. So if you go ahead and check out uh, Nihilus Blogs, you'll see that we've launched the newest scheduler. So this scheduler is, is lined up with our latest version of our API, so our Nihilus API v3. You can go through the blog post and take a look at um, all the different features that are offered. So I won't go through the blog. The, the, there's quite a bit that we have released uh, in the scheduler, but check this out in your, in your own time. Um, and you can go through and see all the new things that we added to the Nihilus scheduler. So now we are going to jump in to uh, using the scheduler. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at what we need to do in our actual dashboard. So what does the setup look like in our dashboard? And there are a few things that we need to do. So I'm going to jump over to the dashboard and show you. So le let's first start at the top of the Nihilus dashboard. So the first thing you're going to do is you're actually going to create an application. So I've gone ahead and actually created an application for us, and it's a scheduler v3. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit more. So you'll see it's scheduler v3, and we're going to use our sandbox environment. So this is the quickest way to get started with Nihilus. You don't have to add any connectors. You can just start building your application and using Nihilus right out of the, right out of the box. Um, and this is a great way to get started with using Nihilus and, and, and getting an idea of all the different features and functionalities you can build out. So in our case, we created a new application. We, we created it in the sandbox environment. And once you create a click on this application, there are a few pieces of information that we're going to need to, to use uh, when we're adding the scheduler to our application. So the first one is going to be the client ID. So this is just the identification of the application we have. Uh, so the scheduler v3 applications ID is this. And we're going to use it and add it to our actual code. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the hosted authentication provided by Nihilus. So I've gone ahead and added a callback URI. And a callback URI is essentially once you've authenticated the user uh, using Google or Microsoft, where do they end up? So where they end up is going to be in our local host. So we're going to be doing local development. Um, so I'm just going to zoom out just for a second. So that the the URI that we're going to point them to is going to be localhost 3000 uh, forward slash scheduler editor. So we want to drop the user in the editor uh, view of the scheduler first so they can create different schedulers for users to, to kind of use for booking appointments. 
And one thing to point out, uh, we won't spend too much time talking about this, is since the user is going to authenticate on the front end, the platform here has to be JavaScript. So we're going to be using all JavaScript. There's no backend API involved for authentication in this case. So the platform is going to be JavaScript in that case. So these are the two things that you need to go ahead and do. So grab the client ID and as well make sure that you've set up hosted authentication with a URL and platform is JavaScript. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at actually what does it look like to bring in the scheduler. Uh, so we're going to use the package, the Nihilus uh, React package. So I'm just going to scroll up. So here is the package that we we released a few weeks ago. It's a uh, it's it's a public release, uh, so it's generally available. And once you grab this package, you can actually start using all the different React components that are available uh, to build the Nihilus scheduler. And we'll talk more about all the components available in an upcoming live stream. For, but for now, we're going to use like the default uh, out of the box experience. Where we're going to bring in two different components. So I'll just scroll down and show you. Like they have code examples or code samples here as well. But the two components that we're going to we're going to bring in is the Nihilus scheduling component. And this is what a user will see when they're actually. Um, booking an appointment. So this would be like your end, end user's view or a customer's view, for example, that when, when they're trying to book an appointment, they will see the actual scheduling component, the knowledge scheduling component. And as well for someone that's administering or organizing different schedulers, where they're gonna see the actual Nihilus scheduler ed editor uh, component. So we're gonna use a very similar code sample, uh, but these are the two components that we're gonna use. So we'll jump into the code uh, next. And then from there, we'll go through and take a look at a demo. So let's switch over to the actual uh, Visual Studio Code. So in Visual Studio Code, I've created a React application. And uh, I'm, I'm using like different, different parts of the actual uh, React ecosystem, uh, such as React Router. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to focus on using um, the different components available from the at Nihilus uh, React package. So let me just zoom in a bit. There we go. So we're going to use the Nihilus scheduler editor and the Nihilus scheduling. So if we take a quick look at our package.json, uh, we do have a few dependencies, and these are mostly React dependencies. But the main one we're going to focus on here is the at, react, at Nihilus uh, slash React uh, package. So these are top level components that we're going to use uh, for the rest of the code. And the few things that we that I want to point out are that the, the application that we have is going to have two different paths. So if we go to the just the forward slash or the home path, uh, the user is going to see uh, a specific scheduler. And we're going to pass in a configuration ID. So that's going to come from the actual URL parameters. And uh, we won't actually have to pass this in manually. I'll show you how you can actually do it um, when we get to the demo. But the idea here is each scheduler will have its own configuration ID. And we're going to pass it in here so that the user will see that specific scheduler. So this would be a user that's booking a time slot. They're going to take a look at the Nala scheduling component. And the second route that we're going to build out or we built out is the actual scheduler editor. So this is someone that wants to create a scheduler. Um, they would go to this path and they'd be able to create multiple schedulers and administer them, configure them as they like. So in this component, we have a few things here. So the first one is going to be the preview link. So the preview link is just going to take the URL and it's going to add the path, uh, uh, the home path with the actual configuration ID as a parameter. So we're going to use this link in the demo very soon. And as well, we're passing in additional information. So for example, we're going to pass in the actual client ID. So this is what we got from the Nihilus dashboard. And as well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pass in the redirect URI. So this is gonna be used for authentication. So this is what we passed into the actual callback URI uh, on the Nihilus dashboard to use hosted authentication. And a few other things we're passing in the domain that we're gonna use. So it's always good to configure um, which data center you're using. So in our case, we're gonna use the US data center. Uh, we mentioned that we're going to use hosted authentication. Uh, so these are kind of some of the main properties and configuration that you want to go ahead and add when adding the Nihilus scheduler editor 
Um, but for more, I'm going to link you to the actual documentation. So if you head over to our docs and you check out the scheduler docs, you'd be able to see all the different configuration that's required to use the actual scheduler in a React application. And as well, I want to mention that the scheduler is available in, in, to use in any front-end framework. So in our example, we're using React components, but we actually do have web components available as well. So you can add the scheduler to even vanilla JS, uh, vanilla JavaScript, or you can use it to any, and, or you could add it to any other framework such as Vue or Angular. So before we jump in and do a demo next, I just want to ask if everyone can like and subscribe. Uh, we love to hear from our developers on whether you're building with Nihilus, ideas on things you want to build with Nihilus. You can head over to our actual forms um, and share any thoughts or feedback or any ideas you have for videos you love to see. Uh, but please check us out, and we love it if you could like and subscribe us on, on YouTube. So now let's jump into doing a demo. So we've gone through and showed the code base. Uh, let me just add the code back. So we went through and we walked through the code base for showing the scheduler editor and as well the actual scheduling component. Now let's jump over. Uh, so in my terminal, uh, just to run this, um, and as well, I want to highlight that all the code that I'm showing today is available in our actual documentation. So we have quick start guides that you can take a look at. And they'll walk you through all the steps that we're going through today as well. So here, I'm just starting the application. And the application is running at localhost 3000. So let me go ahead and jump into the browser. And I'm going to go to the application. So here is what the application looks like. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually authenticate and connect a user so we can get their availability to build out a scheduler. So let's go ahead and log in. So this is walking us through our, the hosted authentication that we set up. So I'm going to connect my account. And then I'm going to continue. Uh, I'm going to allow Nihilus to access my availability. Um, and then here, this will show all the different scheduling pages that are created or exist so far. So let me just zoom in a little bit. And these are two pages that exist, but we can go ahead and create one uh, very quickly. So let's create one. So let's call it test scheduling uh, page. We're not going to go through all the configuration, but there is quite a bit of configuration available to you in our user interface. And as well, we do have APIs if you want to kind of build out different schedulers. Uh, you can use our scheduler API to do that. So here we're going to click Create. And now we actually have a scheduling page, uh, a test scheduling page uh, scheduler created. And it, it saved all of the updates so far. And we're not going to go through all the different properties here. We'll touch on them on in, we'll touch on some of these properties or uh, these configurations in upcoming videos. But for now, I just want to go back and show you that we have our, our test scheduling page uh, scheduler created. And we actually can go ahead and preview this. So if we take a look at the URL, we're at the scheduler editor URL. It may be a little small to see. Uh, but if we click preview, we're going to go to the actual configuration uh, view. So this is a specific scheduler that we actually can go ahead and start using uh, to book appointments. So if I'm uh, someone that wants to book appointments and someone's given me this uh, scheduler, I can go ahead and click through uh, their availability and book time with them. And this is kind of an example of what the booking flow will look like. Uh, so you're passing your information, and you'd go ahead and book your time with that individual. So that's a quick demo. Um, so I can just go ahead and do that for myself. Um, and then I'm going to go book now. And this will book time in the actual, in the actual user's calendar uh, for you. So that was a demo of the actual Nihilus scheduler. And just to kind of walk us through what we did so far. So we looked at what we needed to set up in the actual Nihilus dashboard or in our, in our developer dashboard to use the Nihilus scheduler. And in our case, we, we kind of went through the the quickest path to getting started with Nihilus. So we set up a sandbox uh, application. We grabbed our application ID or our client ID. And as well, we set up hosted authentication. And uh, afterwards, we grabbed the actual uh, at Nihilus uh, React package. So these are all the components for us to build uh, 
to build the scheduler inside a React application. We also have web components if you want to build in any other framework, even in vanilla JS. And, and then from there, we added and kind of built out the code where we have two different routes. So we had the actual scheduling route. So if someone wanted to book a time, they had that route, and we can display that to the user. So each different scheduling uh, component was based on the configuration ID. And as well, we had the scheduler editor. So if someone wanted to create multiple uh, scheduling or schedulers, they could go ahead and do that as well. So that's it for uh, how to integrate the NADA scheduler. Um, please check us out on our blog as well. Uh, so we do have content coming out on different ways to use the NADA scheduler and all the new things that are coming out with the latest version of the scheduler. Uh, so please check that out when you have time. And that's it for today's live stream. Thanks, everyone.